Welcome back. First Gulf Bank posted a 12% increase in first quarter net profit today to reach 1.05 billion dirhams off the back of higher net interest income. So before we take a look at the day's business news, let's first take a look at the stock indices across the GCC. And in our top business story, the Sharjah Investment Authority, also known as Sharuk, signed an MOU with Invest Hong Kong today, the department to promote foreign direct investment for the Hong Kong SAR government. The agreement sees a strategic investment partnership between the two parties to increase foreign investment and business activities in both regions. The agreement was signed by Sheikha Bodor bint Sultan al Khaimi, the chairperson of Sharuk, and Simon Galpin, the director general of Invest Hong Kong, which came as a result of an investment tour to China made by Sharuk in June last year. It was also revealed at the signing that trade between the UAE and Hong Kong hit 27 billion US dollars in 2012, a rise of 30% from 2011, with projections for this year at over 34 billion. Uh, this uh, memorandum is actually going to open uh, different uh, ways of collaborating between Sharjah and Hong Kong. It is also a way of how can we attract investments to Sharjah and how to attract investments to Hong Kong. So it's a mutual beneficial uh, memorandum that we're signing here. The trade between the United Arab Emirates especially and Hong Kong is very high. It reaches all the way to the 27 billion with an expected increase of the reaching 34 billion by the end of 2013, which means that we need to find ways of how can we collaborate, how can we share knowledge. Uh, the idea of this memorandum is also also to share information, share knowledge between Hong Kong and between Sharjah. And we're very open to, to, to basically experience what, uh, what Hong Kong have actually learned previously and how can we implement it in Sharjah. This memorandum of understanding gives us a great opportunity to really build the links between Shuruk and Invest Hong Kong and together to work as a partner to ensure that investment flows to and from Sharjah and Hong Kong grow from year to year. So this MOU means that we will share experiences and best practice. And although Hong Kong receives a very large amount of foreign direct investment from all around the world, it's also a major source of investment, particularly investment coming from mainland China. And these mainland Chinese companies come to Hong Kong and then use their subsidiaries in Hong Kong to make investments and acquisitions around the world. So by having an MOU with Sharuk, I hope that we can encourage more of these investors to invest here in Sharjah and the rest of the UAE. Dubai International Airport registered a record 5.8 million passengers in March, the fourth consecutive month with over 5 million passengers, according to the monthly traffic report issued by Dubai Airports today. Passenger traffic in March grew by 20.6% from March 2012, the highest since August last year. And year-to-date traffic hit 16.5 million, up from up 15.6% compared with the first three months of 2012. The largest increase in total passenger numbers were recorded on the Western European routes, driven mainly by Emirates Airline and Fly Dubai services to destinations in the region, registering the largest increase in total passenger numbers, followed by the AGCC and then the Indian subcontinent. In terms of percentage growth, Eastern Europe was the fastest expanding market at 67.9%, driven by Emirates Airlines' launch of new services to Poland and Fly Dubai's service to Macedonia, followed by Asia Pacific at 26.5%. Cargo volumes also surged in March, with Dubai International recording 213,748 tonnes of cargo, an increase of 14.7% compared to last year. 
Over in the capital, officials are finalising plans to establish a financial free zone, much like the DISC here in Dubai, according to sources. According to a local daily, regulations for the Abu Dhabi world financial market on our Maya Island will be revealed shortly. A federal decree was passed by the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, in February to create the area, covering 114 hectares. Sources have revealed that the financial free zone will boast 100% foreign ownership and international laws and regulations, among others. Similar to the DIFC, as the capital is keen on developing its economy beyond oil. Almaya Island has been developed by Mabadla since 2007 and 50 local and international firms have already set up shop. Average prices of luxury property in Dubai rose 5% in the first quarter of the year, according to the latest report. Property company Knight Frank also revealed that Dubai came in as the fourth best performing luxury real estate market in the world after high-end property prices rose 18.3% over the past year. Out of 29 cities, Jakarta came in at the number one spot, followed by Bangkok and then Miami. Cities in Europe were the weakest performers, recording an average fall of 2.3% for the quarter. Knight Frank added that it expects, expects stronger growth in the second quarter of 2013 as buyers continue to search for luxury to guard against the Eurozone's continuing crisis. And looking at two other business news now, the US dollar was mixed in trading last week, posting gains against the euro and gold, while closing lower against the British pound. The pound closed the week 1.58% higher against the greenback, following an improved first quarter GDP reading, which came out well above expectations at 0.6%, and avoiding fears of a potential triple dip recession for the UK economy. In the US, following a week in which the majority of the major US corporations reported first quarter earnings, emphasis will once again switch back to the economic calendar this week. Well, we earlier spoke to Gaurav Kashyap, the head of the DGCX desk at Alpari Middle East, to see what to watch out for. Well, Laura, there's a lot more emphasis on the economic calendar this week, with the FOMC announcing their rate decision on Wednesday, followed by the European Central Bank rate decision on Thursday. Of course, this will all be capped off by the all-important U.S. non-farm payroll report due out on Friday. Now, if we start over in the Eurozone, the European Central Bank is widely expected to cut rates uh, when they meet on Thursday. Of course, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the head of the Bundesbank, Jens Weidmann, uh, was commenting when he said that if the Eurozone uh, data continues to deteriorate, rate cuts would, would very much be on the cards. Uh, these comments were followed by uh, the President of the European Commission, Jose Manuel Barroso, when he said that recent austerity measures had reached their limits. Now, although we may see some disputes within the ECB and a rate cut may not be a foregone conclusion, we're definitely not leaving it to the stars in this case as we expect the ECB to go ahead and initiate a 25 basis point cut. Once again, inflation has been one of the key focuses for the ECB, but with inflation well below the target of 2%, this really room, leaves room for the ECB to maneuver and cut rates towards the downside. Now, over across the pond, if we look at the US, the FOMC comes out with their rate decision on Wednesday. Now, although they're expected to maintain their current 85 billion uh, US dollar per month asset purchases, uh, we could probably see a shift in their rhetoric to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more neutral to hawkish with regards to upcoming, uh, upcoming monetary uh, policy decisions. The data has been improving off the back of uh, personal consumer sentiment as well as the housing market and this could see a, probably a small shift in the tone with regards to future growth forecasts. Of course, Friday we see the, the U.S. non-farm payroll report uh, la following last month's disastrous reading of 88,000 new jobs. Estimates are on the street for between 130,000 to 150,000 new jobs. Once again, I wouldn't be leaving it to the stars in this case. I'd probably be looking at how uh, the weekly jobless claims have been improving, and we should probably see a jobs report coming in between 130 to 150 on Friday.